Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Oob and um, I want to introduce our new nurse practitioner. Hi, my name is Mimi Ong and I'm a family nurse practitioner here at Oob Medical. Great! So tell me a little bit about uh, your medical training. Like, how did you get here? Yeah, so uh, I've been a registered nurse for many years now in different areas from subacute to acute care to intensive care. And uh, so, what does that mean? What is like subacute versus acute versus intensive care? So, just different levels of uh, acuity. And so, uh, so I assume some of it's like in a doctor's office, some of it's in a hospital. Yeah, most, most of my training is in, or most of my career is in the hospital setting. Um, yeah, I did do a little bit of home health or office space as well. So you're a family nurse practitioner, just like I'm a family medicine doctor, so mm -hmm. you can see patients of all ages. Right. Um, what, what, all, what all ages does that include? Do you feel comfortable with children, elderly, children. pregnant ladies? Yeah, so as a family nurse practitioner, we had to go through um, training with pediatrician, OBGYN, family practice, um, even a psychiatric setting as well. So we went through all kinds of settings and um, was exposed to all ages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we call that womb to tomb in family medicine. It doesn't matter if you're born, not born, all the way to death, mm -hmm. we, can, we can take care of you, right? Yeah. So as a nurse practitioner, a lot of people may not understand what that is. Mm -hmm. So what medications can you prescribe? So basically, you know, all kinds of medications, not controlled substances, level two, but um, we can basically prescribe any other medications. Except for, of course, IV medications <coughs> uh, that, uh, that it's mostly in a hospital setting. Mm -hmm. And so if you did need a, a certain medication that the nurse practitioner can't necessarily prescribe, she has me in the office mm -hmm. and I can always prescribe that medication. Mm -hmm. So along the same thread, what labs can you order? Do you have any limitations compared to me? Um, no, no, we don't have any limitations on that. We can basically order any labs. Great. We feel comfortable interpreting when the results come out. So Mimi, tell me, you're a conventional trained nurse, conventional mm -hmm. trained family nurse practitioner, just like my background was all conventional. So what kind of got you started into functional medicine? What sparked that interest? Yeah, so back in 2018, when I first graduated from um, the University of Texas at Arlington, I got a job in Substance Use Treatment Center. And my role there was uh, medical detox and any medical management of the people that are staying in that program. And usually the program's about two weeks to three months long. So anyone that has medical problems usually comes to me um, for management. And so as I was detoxing these patients off their um, narcotic use or their substance use, um, I started to see, well, it was really difficult um, trying to address all their symptoms that got them into substance use in the first place, like chronic pain, um, anxiety, um, insomnia. And so I was actually just giving them one pill for basically trading one pill for another. Mm -hmm. Like if you, they complain of insomnia, then I place them on trazodone or doxepin or just different kinds of medications. And it was it felt like putting a Band-Aid on a water leak. So just kind of covering their symptoms instead of getting the root cause. Right. And when I heard the word root cause <laughs> there, and so I was like, well, well, that's where I should be going to. Right. And to, you know, and so I was uh, researching of... Uh, you know, what is this? What is this medicine way of getting to the root cause? And that was how I found functional medicine. So I like one of your cases you told me when we first met was this this guy, I think it was a guy and then a girl, um, who had restless leg and had been on some sort of benzo of some sort for years. Yeah, and he then... was using narcotics to kind of try to get his pain under control of, from restless leg. And so when I looked deeper into it, it was actually... He had low ferritin level. Which is what? Um, iron storage. Okay. Yes. And that was what caused him to have restless legs. And so when I started replacing iron for him, the restless leg kind of stopped um, uh, or the intensity. And uh, he felt better and uh, he didn't have to rely on other medications for his symptoms anymore. 
So it was kind of like one of those aha moments of like, oh my God, I've stumbled yeah. across something that I didn't have to cover with another drug. Right. We got to the root cause and fixed right. it. Right. And then Very introducing cool. foods that are rich in iron and uh, getting them to eat better, how to uh, also... One of the biggest things that I got to teach them when I de- uh, when I got more into functional medicine is eating hygiene and how not a lot of people know what that is and how important it is in absorbing, digesting, absorbing nutrients. So what what is uh, eating hygiene? Okay, so, <laughs> you know, eating hygiene is just like a list of stuff. How, how are you chewing? Do you know that it takes 20 minutes for your belly to tell your brain that you are full? And so if you're just like shoving down, you know, in like five minutes, your body doesn't have time to digest, doesn't have time to, you know, chew the foods and let your um, whole GI tract absorb the nutrients. And therefore, you're just doing a disservice for your body. Very cool. So um, self-awareness or teaching them about, you know, awareness of foods and awareness of uh, eating hygiene uh, got them to be very aware of and I'm sorry for too much awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, and less dependent on medications because yeah. they got the right nutrients in them. Yeah, now. yeah. And all these patients were interested in foods and um, and would come to me to ask me about, uh, you know, what foods to eat for their symptoms. And I was like, well, I'm not a nutritionist. Mm-hmm. And so when I saw Dr. Oop's office, how, you know, his service has counseling, some mental health and it has nutritionist service, I was like, wow, this is the place I need to be. <laughs> yeah, because you're taking care of like the whole body mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is where, you know, medicine should be, you know, not the old way that we've been handling. Agreed. Things. So on that note, mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about how your membership is structured here at our practice. Yeah, so with my membership, we will you have me as your medical provider um, for any medical questions. And then you have our wonderful nutritionist that can guide you and uh, what foods to eat. Um, so everyone's different, right? So one diet might not be right for, right. you know, uh, for one person to another. And then there's the wonderful um, counseling service as well because mental health is uh, very important as part of our overall health. Yeah, and sometimes we don't realize, even ourselves included, that you can eat the right food, you can do all the right things, but Mm -hmm. if you've got this terrible emotional battle you're going through um, with whatever that may be, maybe it's a bully at school, maybe it's a bad marriage, whatever it may be, all those things affect your body. Mm -hmm. And so you can act like you can eat the perfect diet to fix it, but uh, it's all aspects, right? Like you said a minute ago, right. it's body, mind, and spirit. You got to take care of all of it in order to get the the human healthy again. Yeah. 